Black Eyed Children are an American contemporary legend of paranormal creatures that resemble children between ages 6 and 16 with pale skin and black eyes who are reportedly seen hitchhiking or panhandling or are encountered on doorsteps of residential homes. In the last few years The frightening phenomena of the black-eyed children visitations has swept the internet. No matter who tells it, the encounters always occur the same way. Someone home alone in the middle of the night hears a knock on the door. When they peek through the window, children normally in a pair are seen standing in the cold. As the resident cautiously cracks open the door to see what might be wrong, a familiar feeling of dread washes over them the strange children beg to be let inside but something isn't right there's something off about these kids as the lonely resident looks closer they see that these children's eyes are black as an oil slick an unnerving detail that causes them to slam the door and deny their pleas for entrance some of them call the police Others clutch a weapon but never ever do they let the black eyed children inside. Now let's listen to an encounter of these weird creatures by a lady. Let me start by saying that I know how hard this is to believe. But now that the things have taken turn for the worse, I started looking for stories similar to mine. I made the mistake of letting the black-eyed kids inside, and now I'm worried that I might die because of it. I hope this will be a warning to everyone who is ever in the position to make the same mistake that I did. I live just outside of a rural town in Vermont. It's a tight-knit community where everyone knows one another and people don't lock their doors at night. There has never been any need to. A little over a year ago, I woke up because I heard a loud banging on my front door. At the time, my husband and I lived in a small home on a dirt road. just off the rural route into town it was the middle of a snowstorm and the nearby hills get very slippery in the snow so i thought that someone might have been in an accident and broken down it's happened before when i looked out of the window i could see motion spotlight was on I could see that there were footprints in the snow that had come from our road and into our driveway but there was no car anywhere The snow was still covering the road and no one had driven on it for at least a couple of hours Our front door was obscured from the window but I could see that someone was standing there I wasn't sure what to think so I woke my husband up just to feel safer while i was telling him what was going on and the banging on the door it started again and my husband went to answer it while i stood in the hallway when he opened the door there were two children standing in the snow looking towards the ground they were a boy and a girl and could not have been more than 8 years old They were dressed strangely and had odd haircuts. The girl's hair was very long and straight and the boy had a dated haircut that looked almost like a bowl cut. They weren't dressed for winter and my first thought was that they must have been menotine children. But as far as I know there was never a large community of menonites near us. Thinking back on it, I know that my normal reaction to seeing children in a snowstorm 
would have been to rush them inside and bundle them up with some blankets and hot cocoa. But that's not how I felt. The children were very unnerving. They would not make eye contact and when my husband asked them if everything was okay, they asked if they could come in. My husband looked at me like what do I do? And I asked the kids where their parents were. They'll be here soon is all they said. It was around 2 o'clock in the morning at this point. So the only reasonable thought in my head was that there must have been an accident or these kids got lost. As much as my instincts told me not to bring them inside, I did it anyway. I went into the kitchen to make them some hot cocoa while my husband took them into the living room. While I was fixing the kettle, I could hear my husband talking to the kids. He was asking them if they were okay, where they came from, how far they have walked, if their parents car was broken down, things like that. But they always answered, our parents will be here soon. They spoke in a sing-songy voice. They were not afraid to be in a stranger's home at all. I started to notice that our cats, we had four, were all hiding except Pigeon, who was in the kitchen with me. Normally our cats are very curious and friendly and we have to be careful that they don't run out of the door when we leave. This time none of them even tried to see who were here, which I thought was very strange. All of the hair of Pigeon's neck was standing up and his tail was puffed up while he looked into the living room. When I bent down to pet him and see what was wrong, he hissed and started growling and backed up until he had hid himself under the kitchen island. I have never seen him do that before. When I walked back into the living room, the kids were sitting on the couch as still as can be, but my husband was holding his head in his hands. I asked him, what was wrong and he just said he felt very dizzy all of a sudden but that he was fine. I turned back to the children to give them their cocoa but when they looked at me I gasped. It took everything inside of me not to drop the mugs and run away. When they looked at me their eyes were completely black. They had no whites just giant black pupils. When they saw that I was scared, they stood up and asked if they could use the bathroom. I tried to be as composed as I could be and showed them down the hall. They went into the bathroom together and I hurried back to my husband and asked him if he had seen their eyes. He had seen them too and said that it looked like his brother's badly bruised eyes after a car accident. We were in the middle of talking about whose children they could be when my husband's nose started to bleed. He'd never had nosebleeds as long as I had known him. I just knew inside myself that this had to be something with the kids in the bathroom and I started crying while I ran to it to get some tissues. That's when the power went out. I heard my husband yell my name from the living room and as I started to walk back through the hallway, I stopped dead in my tracks. The two children were standing at the end of the hallway. They were not moving and I have never been so scared in my whole life. They just stood there in the dark. After what felt like forever, the boy said, Our parents are here. And they walked to the door and opened it. And walked out, leaving it wide open. My husband jumped up 
to close it almost fell over. We looked out of the window and saw two men standing by a black car at the end of our driveway. The men looked like they were wearing black colored suits and were very tall, at least six feet. When my husband waved at them, they just stared at us, got into the car and drove off. Our power came on about half an hour later but nothing was the same after that. Over the next few months, three of our cats went missing. We can only assume that they ran away somewhere and never came back. But the worst thing was coming home to find Pigeon in a puddle of blood on the living room floor. He looked like he had been vomiting blood. The vet told us that he had some kind of hemorrhage. After my husband's nosebleeds became a regular occurrence, we went to see the doctor. He didn't know what to make of it, other than dry nasal passages. But my husband was diagnosed with an aggressive skin cancer. When the doctor asked us if he used tanning beds, we both thought he was joking. But apparently this kind of melanoma is linked to overuse of indoor tanning. The doctors think he will recover but don't understand how he got that so badly so quickly. My husband has never worked an outdoor job and spends relatively little time in the sun. Since we let the black-eyed kids inside our homes, I've also suffered from regular dizzy spells and nosebleeds on a regular basis. I've had other issues which I won't mention. But trust me when I say that I'm suddenly in the worst condition of my life and no one can do anything about it. I know that all of this is because I let the black-eyed children into my home. We've told everyone we could about the strange kids that showed up that night. No one else saw them and some laugh at us that how scared we are of them. I wish my husband had never opened the door. My advice would be to lock your doors, call the police and wait for morning. Don't make the same mistake that I did.